What it do, surprise, shawty crew. Happy Monday after Thanksgiving. I just feel like it's very appropriate. <laughs> like all day, it ain't a regular Monday. It's the Monday after Thanksgiving, okay? Um, I am in good spirits. My sense of humor is back, so I'm good. I was tweeting like um, my bounce back game and the Lord is strong. And it really is like, as soon as I got home, like it was clean, it was peaceful, it's decorated for Christmas, hence the bin in the hallway, if you can see it. But it was immediate like relief, you know, like my sanctuary, like my safe place. Um, and I had to retreat within myself a lot the last few days so that I could just find that um, in me. I'm gonna do this like drive-by style. I noticed one of the last few times that I was there, like when I dream, I'll be back here at my house. Like my spirit still be like here, or at least that's my spirit is showing me like home. Like I don't be, I take me with me, you know what I'm saying? Like, so really like that's inside of you, okay? Um, I went through a mixture of emotions, um, and I, honestly, y'all, what bothered me the most was, like, God, I don't know how to talk to him, my king of spouse him, about any of this, and, but I just don't want this for my kids, like, I don't want to be like this. And I think I, I cried on the live once trying to tell y'all that, like, it's family members who I know I don't want to be like. And um, ultimately, that just means I don't want those same demons moving through me. I don't want the enemy moving through me like that. And I think another large part of why everything was so overwhelming is because, like, in the last upload, I was telling y'all, it's like I be in my attack but I have an aerial view. And with the aerial view comes um, a historical view. And so I really couldn't figure out like why I wasn't eating. Like it's Thanksgiving, we supposed to be eating. And it's cause I had to keep my spirit man up. So that's why I'm gonna put my tweet uh, as the thumbnail. Spirit of Jehu, is that you? You know, and I had read about that. Um, some time ago, and I think I had put it in the community post. And you know what's crazy? We have been releasing words like the Wicked Witch is dead and her time is up and all these things. And that just manifested in my life unexpectedly. I didn't in anticipate it being no power move, no power play over Thanksgiving. That came out of nowhere. So if that word came to pass out of nowhere, doesn't that give us confidence that the other things will as well? So I'm going to go back to kingdom spouses. But another thing is I didn't have my allergy medicine, which made everything a thousand times worse because even on my allergy medicine, I will still get the chest pains, the headaches, all of that. And I've mentioned, you know, like I, I do believe that that's spiritual intimidation. I do. I think it's the air. He's the prince of the air. I think it's just in the air. So even right now, I'm still kind of like sickish. But it's like, I don't know, that stuff don't get to me like it used to do when I was younger. And before I really understood, like, everything was spiritual. So back to this aerial and historical view. It's like God be showing me the enemy's agenda. Like, I was going to move through this one person's womb. And they were going to inflict wounds on the rest of the bloodline. Multiple generations. And so what he kept stressing to me was the source, the source. And he, he has built me up in this hour to get it at the source. Like that stuff with cousins and stuff, that was play play. That, that was devised. That was plotted. That was throwing rocks, hiding your hand from the source. Okay. That might not be for everybody. But we was dealing with the source. Like I'm, I, I kid y'all not. I was like, why am I fasting? 
because I was fasting, because I was so sensitive. So if y'all saw my Facebook posts and stuff, um, I was like steps ahead the whole time. And that was causing the demonic entities because it's more than one, right? Like the chest tightness, that that's the snake wrapping itself around you, right? Like you finna have a panic attack, the anxiety and all that. That's the snake, right? Leviathan, is that its name? Jezebel, all of that. So the manifestation really just, I can't say surprised me because it's not like we haven't seen it our whole lives, but it was just kind of like, I'm tired of this. I'm tired of this. Enough is enough. And so besides the my canine spouse, like the biggest reason, the only reason really I don't, establish a boundary or hold my boundary is because I think about the kids and like who gon who gon protect them from this because kids don't know better like the oldest is my nephew and he's um learning and growing he the oldest he 14 and um you know and and in our society, in our culture, okay, it's kind of taught that you just tolerate abuse from the older generation. And they silence the children who be telling the truth. So that was me. That was the role I played growing up. You know, like, hey, I don't think you should be talking to them like that. The fact that you talk to me like that. And then it shut up, stay in your place. You're not allowed to have emotions. You're not allowed to have feelings. You're not allowed to have opinions and now this big old cycle of abuse continues why am I picking a man who will bully me well you getting bullied at the house it's easy to pick somebody that's gonna bully you in a relationship you don't you don't you you don't know what love really is you are equating abuse to love right so then me just sitting there and I'm like yeah this is too much like I was overwhelmed. So with my kingdom spouse thinking, because when you deal with narcissism and they flip the script, like I'll be like, is the enemy gaslighting me? Because then I'll start to believe that I'm the problem. You know, like if you set a boundary now, you the narcissist because you ghosting somebody. Are you, are you ghosting somebody? Or are you setting a boundary? Or because you play that game better than they play it because you play it with the Holy Spirit now you conniving. Am I conniving? Or I just knew you was about to do that. So I was a couple steps ahead of you because of the Holy Spirit. Right? So going through that and, and really not seeing or understanding how it's affecting you. So I knew, I felt it immediately where it was like, everybody leave me alone. That include him. Because I ain't even finna, no, I ain't, I ain't dealing with it. Right? Like, that's how I felt. And then on the flip side of that, like, this is embarrassing. I would never want anybody to know that this be happening. Like, you know, like, in me trying to... And part of that is pride in me. Because I was like, God, I ain't no victim. I, I ain't no victim, God. Right? Really dealing with all these emotions. And so, I want to share with y'all these comments that I found while going through some many videos. Now, let me also say this. Be careful studying up on narcissism because the videos will leave you triggered and you have to know when to remove yourself from triggers whether that's a person triggering you and you need to set a boundary or whether it's because you're learning about it and it's triggering you because it's like all that happened to me remove yourself from it even if that's knowledge of do you get what i'm saying you we have to be mindful of that i learned that when i was trying to um start healing from my narcissistic relationship and that goes to say something too do y'all know how many narcissists have called me the narcissist and how even I would try to talk to people about my experience with that abuse right I don't say all my exes are narcissists it's just one just because you didn't like me and things didn't work out that does not mean I think that you are a narcissist but this one was one pay attention to who tried to flip it on you right and pay attention to those who try to encourage your relationships with other people who abuse you. That's a red flag. And 
part of the fear as to why I, I have not wanted to talk to my kingdom spouse is because when my narcissistic ex entered my life, I was healing from all the stuff that happened with my cousins. And I remember, you know, like I, this is somebody I'm dating. Like we should probably talk about all this. We were talking about different things. And I was like, yeah, my family don't really like me, you know? And he was like, blaming it on me like it's probably something you do you probably brag and all that I don't brag like my daddy never played that I I don't brag about nothing I we we would get a whooping if we did something like that right um and so that kind of always stuck with me how he flipped it on me when I was trying to open up to him I'm thinking I ain't gonna tell my kingdom spouse because he might do that and I ain't got time for that because I'm not gonna like him or respect him after that or even him seeing me in my moments where I may not have been behaving the best, right? And then I just thought he would blame blame me for some if I tried to tell him what was going on. Like he wouldn't believe me, he would blame me because that's usually the story. And that's why I felt it was really important to include that in the post today. Like there's a difference in being a human and then allowing right darkness to be you to be the host of darkness. Right, which is like full blown possession. It's a difference if you have a moment, a weakness. Jezebel hopping, you she hop right out, but she knows she can't stay there, right? Because you you evict her. It's it's different when you actually are like, hey, live in me, and I'm gonna do evil to people for years upon years upon years. There's a difference. So right? I knew in seeing these comments, God was telling me it was okay to tell him. I actually ended up crying when I read them. Um, I think one is from the perspective of a woman. One is from the perspective of a man, but knowing that this went on with his wife. And something else I want to say, the therapist and stuff can tell us all these things, but at the end of the day, it's spiritual. And in Sunday school yesterday, that's the the verses we came from. We wrestle not against flesh and blood, even if the demon is moving through your flesh and blood, okay? But at the end of the day, you you want the perspective of God when it comes to narcissism. Why? Because it was his true prophets who threw Jezebel down. It ain't enough to just know, you know, like she has to die. And and in order to defeat her, God, you need his power. You need his authority. You need his view. Okay, so make sure when you watch these videos, you're able to draw the biblical parallels, right? Um, just be very, very mindful of that because you can get caught up in the world's way of dealing with it. And the way you deal with it isn't even what God would want. Okay, so in the post on Facebook, I told them, make sure you're studying Jezebel in the Bible. That comes with a lot of things. Make sure you are studying Elijah and even his response and reaction to her. Make sure you're studying Jehu. Like, there's a difference. And he really sent me in. Like, ain't no peace till sis is gone. And I didn't know that. And I knew immediately, like, oh, the, the witch is dead. It was a transfer of power. It's time for you to sit down moment because I'm prophetic I have to pay attention to everything that I'm saying that's why I told y'all in the caption I had said something like the last dance is the last dance I was like why am I even saying that right and even when I when I did say I might have yelled you will not be around my children I was talking to the demon I was talking to the spirits who had access to the bloodline this whole time it stops with me you will not go any further and I meant it I meant it, okay? This wasn't no, oh, my feelings is so hurt type of experience. This was like, somebody finna die and it's not me in the spirit, okay? So let me read these um, ver- these comments to y'all. And also, you can set boundaries today. They don't have to be set in 2023. You can set them today, okay? Still have compassion in your heart because God has shown me what wounds those spirits were able to hop on that family member through. So I've I've been praying against that. But until you give that to God, because I can't heal you and I can't drag you to the feet of Jesus, you can't be near me. And that's to protect my peace. That's to protect my seed. I can't just, come on in, demon. No, no, absolutely not.
All right, so yeah, I definitely be like, I think I be thinking I'm like hard to love and just like too like damaged and I be fighting like crazy y'all to like be the me I see. Okay, so real quick, shift the gears. The first comment that I had screenshotted was left by a husband. And he said, my wife was the scapegoat in her family. She's an amazing mom, wife, best friend. She's loving, fiercely loyal to our son and I. She runs a very successful small business and her work ethic is out of this world. Having been around her toxic family and seeing firsthand just how sick and twisted the, fi the family Seeing how t sick and twisted the family dynamic is, you couldn't ask for a better human being. I can't even begin to tell you guys how proud I am of her. Um, it made me cry. I thought that was very sweet. And all families have generational curses, right? But for some reason, I don't know why I'd be like, but I don't think nobody else feeling like this. Like, this is crazy. And that's a lie from the enemy because he running rampant everywhere. Now, do different families struggle with different curses? Absolutely, right? And even in saying that, God knows what he's doing when he paired people together. He just does. So I just thought that was sweet because it sounds like, I feel like if your man on the internet saying this, um, and of course, obviously, don't nobody know who she is or whatever. Like, don't be telling I'm a business. Don't be telling folks I'm Aunt Bay. But um, I'm imagining he's very reassuring to her. And like, he sees the need for that. And I had told my mama, like, hey, I'm supposed to be crazy. Ain't no way in the world I done went through all this and I'm not crazy. Right? And I know it's God. And it's a lot of people where it's like, you went through all that, you still standing, that's God. That's a miracle of strength, right? Like a miracle of sanity, keeping you in your right mind because his spirit gives you the spirit of power, love, and a sound mind. Confirmation. But for real, y'all like, get what I'm saying? So um, that was the first comment. Made me emotional and I had screenshotted it. I was like, I need to keep that. You know, I'm pretending somebody out here think like that about me. <laughs> he does think like that about me. Okay. And which is going to bring me to this second one. Okay. So this is a lady. She said, I lived in a narcissistic relationship for 20 years. I was almost diagnosed with borderline personality disorder. I fought, got divorced, got custody of our kids and was able to form another relationship not without problems. And so for me, I was thinking like, um, like I don't even need to be doing nobody, telling nobody I love them, nothing. Like till I'm healed, healed. And and that's what been kind of hitting me. Like I'm not healed. Like God. And and it's not you not healed because you still getting triggered, but you really you recognize like it's still some work you can do. It's still some growing and some nurturing and some love and stuff, right? And so this whole healing together thing is pretty wild because it's like the enemy be hopping in my wounds. I got right? human nature. So it's not going to be that it's without problems. So let me keep reading. This is a good comment. She said, um, not without problems since we both have our separate scars and psychological problems, but we're sticking. And who do that? God, the Holy Spirit, a cord of three strands. Okay. Um, she said, I taught him what gaslighting and passive aggressive behavior was. Um, and neither of us tolerated any, the other. Right. And I think we had released a prophetic word about that. Like, it's important to be able to tell your kingdom spouse. No, my teach me about boundaries and like how to like keep them in place. Right. And like even how to like be cool. When other people not being cool, even though I will argue I may have felt that a bit. But it, I mean, once we go deliverance mode, we go deliverance mode. And it's not like lay hands on your deliverance mode. It's like, you can come up and out. Like, you want to see me? Let's go. Like, you want to tussle? Like, okay, that was me being funny. But um, for real, he teaches me about boundaries, right? And I used to think that it would be one of those things where, like, he would make me feel guilty if it was like, I don't want to deal with them. And he's never made me feel guilty about that because boundaries are important, right? So, um, 
She said that she taught him what gaslighting and passive aggressive behavior was and neither of them tolerated in each other. That that doesn't say that it might not come out. That that doesn't mean that you might not act in a certain way or do something right or hurt them, but you don't tolerate it. And you cannot tolerate something and still love somebody. Right? Um we call it out when we see it if to one another, right? We're going to make it and have some really good experiences while we're doing that. Like this, like healing together. This is crazy. Like, God, I don't know. I don't know what I thought this was going to be, but it was not this. While okay. still holding me accountable and challenging me to be light and love. It's a balance in this thing. And I'm very um, appreciative of that. So one of the last things, with that um the devil will use your own heart against you to confirmation to make you lower a boundary uh, remove a guard that god has instructed you to put in place the devil will play on your emotions like it's called um what's it called is it is it logos i don't think it's pathos i think it's logos ethos oh my gosh we learned this in literature y'all know what it is leave it in the comments i'm end up googling it but um the devil will play on your emotions to make you act, excuse me, boundaryless, to move boundaryless. And that's just, that's part of it. Like if I'm seeing it enlarge my territory, territories are defined by boundaries, right? So some things cannot get in. There, there's a line and when you want to cross the line, you can't come in. Okay. I miss that all the way up. Pathos appeals to the emotions, trying to make that audience feel angry or sympathetic. I remember learning that in AP Lit. So, um, be mindful of that, right? Because that's why it's hard. Like, I mean, I, it, my whole life, it was like, once they chill out, once they done spazzing out, you know, everything cool, ha ha ha, but it's not cool. Cause you're going to do it again. Right. And even me, like, I don't like being angry. I don't like being mad. I don't like not having peace. Like, so I do like simmer down like fairly quickly, and it's in that, and even in God telling you to pray for them, that don't mean, like, go go remove the boundary so they can just keep doing it. That's not what that means. And I recognize that in me. Like, no, I actually am cool. Like, I'm not mad. I don't feel away, but you still going to stay away from me, right? Not because I'm mad, but you got to be wiser than that. You got to be quicker than that. You got to be quicker than the devil because as soon as he see you playing weak with your emotions, now he going to do it again, right? So y'all stay up. Stay up, we up, we blessed. Like, literally, the Wicked Witch is dead. And she better not try to stand up again. You better sit down. Like, all the demons is going to hell. You better act like you know. Because they do know. That's why they try you like that. Right? Like, it's a new sheriff in town. <sighs>